In this video, we unbox, we build, we make it work with RetroPie, we compare it to other 3.2 and 3.5 inch TFT screens. We do it all. So if you want a comprehensive video on these 3.5 inch TFT screens, specifically this one with a high refresh rate, runs RetroPie great, then stay tuned. This is the 3.5 inch screen, so for really inexpensive, portable or stationary, you don't necessarily have to go portable, but it fits directly on the Raspberry Pi, it fits right over those GPIO pins, and we have the 3.5 inch screen for your Raspberry Pi, look at that. We're going to make this thing look good. Now, something I've learned about these cases before is these are... Um, there is some sort of coating on here that is very difficult to come off. It's not very difficult, but it's going to take some time. I'm going to time lapse this next part too. You just got to put the pie on there and make sure all the screws are correct. You can see the video here. It's pretty self-explanatory. You'll see where the micro SD comes out and that'll help you orientate everything. The only weird thing was there's a little cross member piece that went through the middle of the pie. You'll figure that out though. It's just this one little skinny piece that goes across the uh, LAN and uh, right behind the LAN and the USB ports. All right, and there you have it. Now it's all done. You got the ports here. You got your power, your HDMI, your audio. You got that little cross member there. That's a little clear piece that goes through this side, and then it connects to this side. It's kind of weird. Um, it keeps, I think, everything in place. It's like a cross member. Um, no ports here. Got your micro SD slot, easy access. You can see the bottom of the pie, nice and clear. I'm not a fan of the corner pieces being opaque. I think they could have been gold or something else, or clear would have been dope. Um, and then uh, you, you still have access to all your, your LAN and your USBs. And then of course, you got the 3.5 inch display up top. So here is the Geek ROM. When you do buy it, you go ahead and go over to their wiki. And unfortunately, this doesn't, it isn't just plug and play. You are going to have to install their drivers. So what I did was I went to this website right here, and uh, I downloaded the dtblob.bin. Go ahead and save that to your hard drive. Put your micro SD card into your computer, and you can see I have my uh, Windows Explorer open. My JDrive is a uh, any image you want. This could be any image. You could start fresh with RetroPie, or you can have a preloaded image. You can have an image you already made. And uh, this is your boot directory here. And what you want to do is you want to drag over that dt-blob.bin folder and put it directly into the boot directory. Don't put it in overlays, just put it directly in. So drag and drop that. Then you want to go over to your config.txt, go ahead and open with WordPad. And this is where you're gonna you're gonna paste in all this information that they want on the um, on here, which is the fr the frame buffer, the resolution and uh, all these settings, which are gonna set up your configure your uh, your display properly. And if you're running a Raspberry Pi 3, I added these two lines as well. So I ended up putting all these lines, not this line, but everything else. You don't need any pound sign or anything like that. You can see what I did was mine already had a frame buffer up top, and uh, I had to delete some of the old settings to add in my new ones. But once I added in my new ones, here it is here all of them see exactly as you see on the left plus the two lines you might already have a frame buffer width and height pre-programmed into your image make sure you delete those so you don't have conflicting uh, commands but once I did this I just exited out and you're done uh, there's some other methods here especially if you want to start with a fresh build of Raspbian but uh, you know me I already had an image I wanted to add so this is definitely by far the easiest way to do it. Um, there's a couple other ways I looked up online that did not work, like the wave. There's a, another screen called the wave buffer 
um, or something similar to that. And unfortunately, those ways of installing those drivers do not work for this particular screen because this screen does connect through the GPIO pins, not through the HDMI like a lot of other screens do. But as you saw, it works great. So um, it does work. Just follow these directions here. It works just fine as you saw and voila. All right, let's plug this in. All right, we're gonna be using the F710 here. All right, welcome. It's wireless. So I'm in, going back and forth here. So I got it running and the 60 Hertz is nice. So let's play Sega CD. Let's play some Sonic CD controller. I'm sorry, my cord's a little short here, so it's pulling. All right, so I'm pressing buttons, getting this started. Uh, I do not have sound on right now. You could probably hook up a 3.5 mil and get the sound working just fine. And uh, I tested this before I started this video, and I can tell you already, you're gonna be surprised like how good this looks. And again, you're looking at it through a camera. It looks amazing. What, come on, Sonic. So as you can see, no tearing, no um, frame skipping, no, um, you know, some of these 3.5 screens, the, the refresh rate is a little too slow. And here it's 11 milliseconds, so you know it's very good. I would say it's one of the better displays I've seen. And again, for that price point, ooh. And I haven't messed with any of the overscan settings or anything like that. It's just the ones I copied and pasted in there. I'm sure you can move the screen up and down if you need to, but I'm liking where it is right now. I don't, I don't see any of the screen being cut off. Um, I don't know if you can get any more of the left and right side there. And usually in my experience, there is usually some dead space there. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, playing some MAME. So there you go, Turtles in Time, running great, no tearing, nice refresh rate. Those are just poles, those are pixels flying off your screen. Here we can see the WaveShare 3.5 inch TFT screen and as you see it has a way lower refresh rate. Same with the WaveShare 3.2, but the 3.2 actually does look better than 3.5, but I have to say the 3.5 that I have, I'm reviewing this video, the, the Geek Realm is way better. Um, do want to give a shout out to Retro Man Cave, this is footage of his, but I thought it was very appropriate so you guys could see a side by side comparison. Comparing it to my screen, there really is no contest. I mean, the 3.5 barely chugs along. I mean, I would almost call that unplayable. The 3.2, although nice, I still think that the, the, the one I'm reviewing in this video, the um, Geek Rom, is far, by far superior, not only in just the backlightness to it, but also just the refresh rate and the coloring. So uh, it's pretty apparent. So overall, I am very happy with this unit. I really like the higher refresh rate, the higher frames per second. This really does make for a better gaming experience, especially when you compare it to some of the other TFT screens out on the market. Yes, you'll save a bunch of money, but you'll be happy that you went a little over the top and got something a little nicer. Now for sure, when you go into the five inch and the seven inch screens, you can get some good bang for your buck. But for this particular size and it being so small, this is an awesome, awesome, awesome screen. I highly recommend it. The other thing to keep in mind that this is a GPIO powered and it is powered through the Pi, where a lot of the other screens out there need a separate power source as well as they need an HDMI cable, which adds a lot more bulk to this setup. So keep that in mind, really great. Links in the description if you're interested. Don't forget to like and subscribe, ask questions, and we'll see you on the next one.